I used to hunt here. Every now and then I hunt. I was raised on wild food, deer, pheasant, antelope. My dad taught us to feed. He fed us through wild game, moose, deer, elk, and, um, but now it's just a sport. It's more or less a sport now than, than you know, living off the, living off the land. But for cultural, the cultural aspect of it, I, I, I take a lot of stuff off the land to use. There's a couple times that we have gotten a, a, a deer and we weren't sure if we could eat that meat because that deer had no fat on it. And it not, wasn't because of the rut, it was because there was all these little tiny blister things in the meat and on the, on the guts, when we opened the guts up. So we noticed all these little things on there. Then as we skinned it, we noticed the deer had zero fat on it. And I don't know if it was from the, the brain, uh, that wasting disease, or I don't know what was wrong with that deer. Several of them, and it's mainly on that side. It might be from pesticides, maybe. I don't hunt and I don't eat the meat off the animals down in our grasslands in the lower reservation because I'm also a farmer and a truck driver. And I know for a fact that all those crops out there, I'm the guy that brings the poison out there. Every box that I bring out there has got skull and crossbones on it. <coughs> Fungicide, pesticide, herbicide, fertilizer, ammonia. We're poisoning the land. And they brag about Alberta deer. Yeah, they tag out at 400 plus pounds. But those are the same deer that I see eating out of those fields that I just put all that poison into. My brother shot a deer down there. It had ulcerated sores all over its back. We didn't even take the meat. This is the last pristine place. You come up here, the animals, they've got clean feet. There was nothing here sprayed or man-made poisons applied. Maybe alongside the road, yeah, they do some herbicides, whatnot. But out here, when you hunt something out here, you can be guaranteed that the meat is pure and it's good. Oh, hey, I just went hunting and I found some raw kidney, so you guys are welcome to have some raw kidney if you'd like. When I was younger, when I'd be out hunting, when the geese, this time of year, the geese migrate, all birds migrate, and uh, I would notice flocks of geese, like, in the thousands. Now you see, you know, 10 to 15, where you would see hundreds and hundreds just going and going. I mean, that's got to be something with the climate change as well, right? Like, I mean, you know, they'd pass through here, they'd land in the fields, you know, rest, they'd land in the rivers, <clears throat> rest. But now the river is, like I said, it's like a creek now, so they can't land there no more. Before it used to be a bigger body of water, so they would land there, come to the fields, and go back and forth. But now the river's a creek, they can't do it no more. It used to be one time we associated pelicans with Florida. Now they're sitting in the river here. It used to be we never seen raccoons. Now we got raccoons climbing my power pole and getting electrocuted up there and knocking the power out in the whole neighborhood. These animals never existed in our environment these birds. Now all of a sudden you're seeing different things from way down south coming further and further north. What that means is if, if you got wolves or other indicator species in your area then it means that it's still a pretty wild area. So and, and, and these wolves they returned in 1993 and they got killed off. Uh, they established a pack. They had pups and they got shot, most of them, in 1996. But a couple years later, they, they established another pack. There was about three of them that survived. 
and that pack got killed. But the good thing about wolves, uh, at least in this area, there's a really good core population in Glacier National Park. They keep coming back. And I was able to do some work up here this summer uh, on the timber limit, just collecting. Um, they're actually doing uh, pellet counts for uh, for carnivores and, and uh, I guess uh, they call them ungulates, but they would be moose, deer, elk. We were seeing uh, signs of wolves in this area, a little bit in Waterton, but more so in, in, in the Belly River. You know, we saw tracks, we saw, we saw quite a bit quite a few scats we saw some wolf kill sites so they're they're still here which is which means it's you know it's still pretty intact but I guess getting back to climate change um, you know we don't know exactly yet the full extent of, of how these animals and the whole ecosystem is, is being affected uh, there's not as many elk as there used to be you can find an elk this takes a little more work now so I noticed uh, their numbers have uh, gone down. I'm not sure, you know, the reason for that. Maybe reintroducing bison. They're a lot more efficient uh, than cattle. They're less uh, maintenance than cattle. Um, maybe we should start reclaiming some of these farmlands back to grass. It's getting tougher to get weasels, just because sometimes our snow doesn't stick around that much, and they're white. They, they turn white in the winter time to blend in with the snow and that's their camouflage from, from predators, right? So when there's no snow and there's, a, you know, you got a brown field with a bunch of white weasels while they stand out, predators are more likely to get them. So it's harder for us to gather different things like that for our cultural purposes. In the 70s, well prior, but up until the 70s, when we moved there, there was... Um, there was lots of deer, a lot of game, a lot of game along the river. Even the elk would come down, bears, cougars, odd moose here and there. But now the, the, the game is because of the Napiquins occupying around us. The game has kind of left, just like the buffalo. And game tend to follow the river. You know, the rivers have always changed. And all these farmers, with all their chemicals in the the flow of the river, nobody sees them throwing the stuff in there. And then the animals drink it. We drink it. We ingest it. And the animals with that wasting disease is, is a thing that's happening out east. And it's slowly making its way to, to here. And we'd hate to see that. So as a hunter, we need to call out the herd like they used to to, to the buffalo. They did that to the buffalo. They would take the big bulls, old cows, they'd leave the young ones to make the herd stronger, right? You've got a weak one, makes the whole herd weak. That's probably on the climate change on the animals. It's because of these white guys putting that stuff in the river and then the, the animals are ingesting it. And then we, we get the, you know, we get the backlash of whatever they Whatever they ate, whatever they drank. And eat near. The buffalo needs to come back. I don't see antelope here anymore. At the log cars, I used to look, and right by the bottom of this hill, top of the hill, saw Kawakasix, antelope. Now you just see them at McIntyre Ranch, because everything's plowed. I would like to have antelopes come back. And I don't see otters here anymore. Beavers, just stuck you. I don't know where they moved to. So animals have moved on or hopefully they didn't die. And hopefully because of water, I hope, hope nothing becomes extinct. There's some birds I used to see here. I don't see them anymore. Birds that I grew up with. And I'm even seeing less and less deer. I've seen moose down here, very rare now. Elk, probably just upstream. Antelope, used to see them right eating on top of this ridge here. Little kid, gee, just their horns. So, the old lady, keep talking, oh, stand up, sir. 
That's the old lady. What are those? Sokawakas. And there's even an older name for antelope. So this is a very brief glimpse. I hear less frogs summer. Hardly hear them. And the, the, the owls, they make that sound. Woodpeckers, I don't even hear them. They moved on. You hear them in summer. See, this sounds good when you're picking berries and you hear a woodpecker this side or across there hitting the, the trees. See, it's, it's just kind of fascinating. It, it puts everything in its place, you know. So times have changed, and we've talked about fish, water beings, frogs, water, trees. Bears are coming down. Cougars are coming down. It's shifting. That's the real knowledge. Everybody can get all tons of degrees. Yeah, read those books and do your papers. But the real knowledge, the natural knowledge comes first. I, I fall back on my grandmother grass woman. Uh, I recall her stories in the winter when we were growing up, how we'd all sit and listen to her stories on being prepared for what's to come. We don't know, we can't predict, but watch the signs, the, the animals, see how they're doing, what they're doing, the uh, signs of the, of the sun, if it, there's, you know, in the, the, the moon, the sun dogs, the rings around the moon. Be prepared for a weather change. Listen to the animals, watch, observe, be prepared, because that's how we uh, adapted to the environment was through, through the animals, and, and their very uh, senses is, uh, is uh, so intricate that they'll teach us how we can best be prepared and, and best overcome this, because if it, even if there's like a, a tremble, the animals won't go near something that's going to collapse. You know, they'll, they'll back. Even the, the tsunami that happened a couple years ago, those, there wasn't any animals that died. They all got to high ground. Humans didn't. They, they just, what, you know, they didn't understand that for that country. You know, so that, as Indian people, we, we have a, a closer connection to the animals. So that's how we will continue to survive and by watching them, paying attention, and being prepared. My biggest dream has partially came true along with the elders, okay? And that is buffalo restoration, okay? 10 years ago, we started on this buffalo restoration uh, effort. And that was because the elders said, hey, a large part of our culture is connected to that buffalo, okay? And, but, we have the beliefs, we have the ceremonies, we have the stories, we have the songs, but we don't see that buffalo out there, see? So the younger people are not making the connections, see? We need to bring that buffalo back. And to make a long story short, their dream was to see free roaming buffalo again so that younger people can see that buffalo on a daily basis out there. A few weeks ago, Banff brought back buffalo into the national park. And back at the end of September, they took all the fences down, and now the buffalo are roaming free in part of Blackfoot, traditional Blackfoot territory.